nobody should be permitted to work in the store during a fumigation. Leave the store for the duration of the treatment, which should be at least five days. Never allow less time than five days, as this will encourage the development of resistance to phosphine. On the final day of the fumigation, the gas concentration must be checked. A member of the fumigation team should enter the store wearing a gas mask fitted with a fresh phosphine absorbing canister. Push a gas sampling tube under the sheet. Withdraw a gas sample. and then feed it into a phosphine meter. While this is being done, a colleague should be watching from the door as a safety check. An alternative to using the phosphine meter would be to connect the sample pipe to a suitable detector tube. In a good fumigation, the gas concentration on the fifth day will still be at or above 150 parts per million, or 0.2 milligrams per litre. It's now time to air the stack. Open all the doors and any other ventilators to give good airflow. Wearing gas masks, the fumigation team should enter the store and remove the sand snakes from part of the stack. Some of the free sheets should be lifted with a rope to allow residual gas to escape. Okay. The stack must now be left to air for at least two hours. Once this has been done, check the gas concentration close to the stack using a detector tube. If the concentration is below 0.3 parts per million, then workers may be safely allowed into the store to remove the sheets. If not, further airing is required. Once airing is completed, take away the remaining sand snakes and carefully remove the plastic sheets. Take them to where they can be properly folded. Remove all used tablets or sachets and bury them immediately away from human habitation to a depth of at least a half meter. The grain has now been fumigated. It should be left for at least two days to allow any absorbed gas to be released before it can be safely consumed. This is called the withholding period. Once a fumigation is completed, it's important to check that it's been successful. First, look for live insects on the bag stack surfaces. This is best done as soon as possible after the fumigation, in the late afternoon when the insects are active. Another good method is to put samples of infested grain in insect-proof containers, such as bags or metal mesh tubes, before fumigation. The bags or tubes are placed in various parts of the stack before sheeting. This process is called a bioassay. After fumigation, the bioassay containers are retrieved.
the sample of grain is inspected for insects. If live insects are found, then the fumigation has been a failure. If not, the fumigation may be regarded provisionally as a success. However, there may still be live, immature stages, such as eggs hidden in the grain. To check this, the grain samples must be transferred to a well-ventilated, insect-proof jar. And kept for a month to allow the immature stages to develop into adults, which are easily seen. Common survivors of fumigation are the tiny insects called soakids. Although most stages in their life cycle are easily killed, Soakid eggs are very tolerant of phosphine. If you have particular problems with soakids, you must extend the fumigation from five to at least eight days. The stack must be well enough sealed to retain a gas concentration of not less than 38 parts per million or 0.05 milligrams per liter on the eighth day. If this proves too difficult, the alternative is to undertake two standard fumigations ten days apart. Any eggs surviving the first fumigation will then have developed into immature soakids and be killed by the second fumigation. Now to recap on the important points. First, three safety points. Don't fumigate near human habitation. Always wear gloves and a dust mask when handling phosphine tablets or pellets. And when entering a store where stock is under fumigation, always wear a gas mask fitted with a fresh phosphine canister until the air has been checked for phosphine and declared safe. If available, it's better to wear a self-contained breathing apparatus. Before fumigation, inspect the store to ensure the floor is sound and calculate the dosage of fumigant required. To make a good seal, once the sheets are on the stack, check for holes and seal any you find. Fold the corners carefully and seal the edge of the sheet using sand snakes that overlap. Put tablets in a single layer on trays and place them beneath the pallets or at other convenient locations around the stack. Hang sachets at various locations around the stack. Avoid fire by keeping all tablets and sachets away from water. Now close the store and place warning notices at all doors. Leave the store for at least five days. To check that a good fumigation has been achieved, enter the store wearing a gas mask to check phosphine levels under the sheet. Then air the stack for at least two hours. Once the gas level is safe, store workers can enter to clear equipment. Carefully fold the sheets and dispose of the aluminium phosphide residues. Soon after the fumigation is completed, check to ensure that all the insects are dead. This is best done in the late afternoon when the insects are active. Remember that when fumigating against soakids, longer exposure periods are required. When fumigating paddy rice or ground nuts in shell, higher doses will be needed. Don't forget that some commodities such as linseed and cottonseed are not suitable for phosphine fumigation. If you follow these important points, you will always have safe and effective fumigations. will protect your vital grain stocks. 
keep your customers satisfied and keep them coming back for more.